because I feel like that's just asking for a poo. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Connor. Now, today's video, I'm so excited. <laughs> I love talking about running. I got this video idea from Holly B. I'll leave her video down below. She made a video called Running Girlies Don't Gatekeep. Basically everything to do with like running kit, the best clothes to wear, like shoes, that type of thing. So I thought I could do the same because there are so many things that come along with running and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I thought I would just kind of put it all into one video and it's like a one-stop shop. And this is all coming from someone who has only recently started running. Recently as in within the last year. It's almost been one year since I started running, which is wild. Disclaimer, not an expert in running. I'm not even a very good runner. I'm very, very average. My credentials, I have run a half marathon. <laughs> That's it. I will leave everything in the description box down below. I've written a little list on my phone and I think we can start with the outfit. Obviously the number one thing that you need to start running is a pair of shoes. I would highly recommend getting fitted for running shoes. I've made the mistake in the past of buying hockers and hockers don't work for my feet. For some reason hockers have an arch support that really really rubs my feet so I'm thinking maybe they're better for people with high arches. I would have known that if I had tried the shoe on first rather than ordering it online because it looks pretty. Although I have just ordered another pair of shoes online that I have not tried on but if they don't work out I will just return them. Anyway getting sidetracked. The reason I have ordered another pair of shoes is because it's actually not great to do every single one of your runs in what they call a super shoe. A super shoe is basically what it sounds like. It's a really, really super shoe. You typically wanna only use them for race day and maybe interval sessions when you're gonna be going a bit faster, but for easy runs and maybe every other run, you don't necessarily wanna be in a super shoe because they're a little bit more unstable and you want your feet and legs to not rely on the super shoe. So I definitely have made the mistake of doing too many of my runs in these shoes. I just really, really love them. Them. They're so bouncy and comfortable, but I'm definitely trying to not wear them for every single run because as you can see the foam part of these is so high. These are the Asics Super Blast. I wore these for my half marathon. I really like them. They are very, very expensive. That's another reason for not wearing super shoes for every single run because if you're running really frequently, you're going to wear them out a lot quicker and most super shoes on the market are over $380. So yeah, <laughs> but I honestly feel like it's hard to give a shoe recommendation because because everyone's foot is so different. But these are the ones that I like. I think they look sick. I do love Asics shoes. Yeah. Go to Athlete's Foot, get fitted for the shoes, and you'll be good. Because trust me, running in a good pair of shoes will make, it'll make or break you. It will. Hello, it's me from a run. Don't mind the sweaty state. These are the shoes that I ordered online and they are the Cloud Monsters from On Running. I've never worn an on shoe, although I think I've tried on like a friend's or something. I would not recommend buying a pair of shoes that you have not tried on. But with that said, I did an easy run just then. And from what I can tell, I really like these. They're a little bit bouncy, but they're not anywhere near as bouncy as my Asics Super Blast. So, but yeah, I highly recommend trying on the shoe first but these are probably going to be my easy running shoes from now on just to let you know <laughs> now i as much as i would like to i cannot run in flowy running shorts they look so cute and everyone else but my thighs touch when i run so not having fabric in between them is gonna end in a chafing disaster even though i would love to they're just not for me so i stick to cycling shorts don't love running in leggings i find that way too hot even probably in the dead oh maybe in the dead of winter it'd be all right but yeah i'm a running cycling short girly my favorite running shorts of all time are the sax midi premium seamless bike shorts i wear mine in a small what i find with these they will kind of ride up at the start I will say that however when you kind of start sweating and the more that you get into the run they almost just like glue to you and then they they stay put because bike shorts always ride up on me always so I find that these are just brilliant they don't roll down either I always have to wear black running shorts too because otherwise I'd look like I pissed my pants color is just not an option I'll switch it up in terms of the top but not for the shorts it just has to be black I also really like the Gymshark these are from their sweat collection same deal you know within the first few minutes they might ride up a little bit then they will stick and they don't move I think I wore these ones for my heart 
half marathon. Very similar to the Stax ones, <laughs> clearly. I do also like the Gymshark, the Elevate cycling shorts. It's a different fabric and they're a little bit longer. So if I don't feel like wearing ones this short, I'll go for those. Oh, before I forget another short that I really like, it's in the wash right now, but it's the Lululemon Align shorts. They are really nice for running. They're not made for running. I think they're more of a yoga short, but they are really, really nice. I also find that they don't ride up. They're a really comfy short, I will say. I, I love that one. One of my most asked questions is, where's your running vest from? What running vest do you use? I've only ever used one, but I'm very, very tempted to buy the Solomon one that everyone uses. Running vests are pretty pricey. I think this one's from Lululemon, so it's obviously gonna be a little bit more expensive. I think it was $150. With that said though, a running vest is a really, really good investment if you are gonna be doing longer runs, obviously, because you wanna take your hydration, you wanna take food. I personally prefer running with my items kind of on my upper body rather than stuffed into a belt in one spot. But again, everyone's really different. I like this one. The only thing is I, have, I haven't ever been able to figure out the way this straps on. It's so confusing. I do like it though, because it doesn't rub my skin. Even if it's like bare on bare, it's, it doesn't give me a rash. Whereas I've heard other running vests can do that. I find it that it's able to carry a lot, even though it looks quite skinny. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You can fit a big like water bladder in the back if you're gonna be doing that type of thing. It comes with pockets in the front so you can put little hydration bladders. I just got these on Amazon. I think they were 20-ish dollars. I have a smaller one and I have a bigger one. I definitely prefer smaller ones because if I've got two two 500 mil things of water filled up my chest. It's so heavy. And that is kind of the reality of running with water. And I could kind of put one in the back and then get it out if I needed to, but I just prefer the smaller ones. Really handy because they can kind of squish. Very vital for long running. I also love wearing this. This is a running belt from LSKD. It's deceivingly small. This can hold my phone and I have an iPhone Pro Max, whatever the, like it's big. This kind of expands. Let me show you. Kind of goes in there like that. It does look a bit funny, but it fits and it works really well and you can put it around your waist. I prefer wearing my belts on like my back. I don't like having it on the front. I feel like it feels weird. Yeah, I really like this. I think it'd be good if you don't want to get a vest. I used to exclude exclusively only wear my vest if I was doing, you know, a really big run. I've worn it for the past two runs and, and they've just been normal training runs and I really like it. I think I'm gonna kind of just keep wearing my vest even if I'm doing a 5k. My phone is just a lot easier to access. I've gotten over the fact that I'm like, I don't care if people think it's unnecessary. I'm gonna wear my vest. Next on the agenda, I wanna talk about our running socks. I personally only have one pair of running socks. They're in the wash right now, but they're from a brand called Features. I got them at the Asics Half Marathon X I believe they don't have cotton in them, so they're very cooling and they don't make your feet overheat. I do wear them. Have I noticed the biggest difference? Not necessarily. I think it'll be very interesting when I start training for a marathon. I think I will really want anti-blister or running socks once you kind of surpass that 20 kilometer mark in your runs, your feet are probably gonna take a hit. Specifically, my second toes are terrible. I've heard lots of people swear by running socks, so. Another thing I wanna talk about are headphones. What headphones do you use? I recently repurchased my Beats. I had a pair of these and Charlie chewed them earlier this year and I just kind of never got around to getting a new pair. They are very pricey, but they are just the best. They don't fall out of your ears because they have the little hooks. They have really good sound quality. I don't find them to, what's the word, block outside noise too much. So I do feel like I'm aware of my surroundings and I am making sure that I always put them back in the case away from my dog. While I didn't have these, I would sometimes borrow Elisa's Beats or I was using my Sony. Oh, I don't know the name of these, but again, they'll be listed down below. I don't hate running in headphones. I think in the winter time, it's quite nice because they keep your ears warm. And I find that these are pretty good because they aren't like the Air Maxes where I, I would never run in those. They're way too heavy and they just, I would not want to get them sweaty. Whereas these, the leather's easy to clean, even though they do kind of stink a bit. These are very, very easy to change songs as well. You just swipe across on the side and it's so easy while you're running. Whereas these, you have to do like a double click. It sounds not a big deal, but trust me when you're doing like an interval session or something and you just go, shoo, 
I do really like these. They are just a little bit hot for summer. I feel like my ears kind of overheat. I need to go get my Garmin. <sighs> okay, this is my Garmin. I got this as a Christmas present from my boyfriend. If you are thinking about investing in a Garmin or a Koros or an expensive running watch, try and get it in November <laughs> or around Christmas because they are usually half off. I'm pretty sure the normal price of this is $1,000, which is wild. Very grateful that my boyfriend got it for me for Christmas. I also have an Apple Watch that I was using beforehand. I would say if you are serious about wanting to actually get into running, maybe if you have a race goal, I definitely would recommend investing in a Garmin. There are definitely a lot more inexpensive running watches out there for sure. This is the Forerunner 945 and I know I've spoken about my vlog how <laughs> sometimes I think the GPS is out and you know my the distance is inaccurate and stuff like that. I do think that comes with every kind of watch and every kind of tracking program especially since I do live around an area that has a lot of trees. Overall I think this is really really great. It syncs up with my runner app really well. It syncs up with my phone You can read so much data and information about your running, which is really really cool. I do love it It is expensive. Definitely get it on sale if you want to get them I am tempted to try a Koros. Probably not anytime soon I do hear a lot of people talk about Koros and they really really like it So who knows? Another thing that I would say is not necessary, but if you are wanting it, I'm, I'll tell you about it. So this is a heart rate monitor strap. Of course, watches can take your heart rate from your wrist. However, they are known to be wildly inaccurate and it can be really helpful knowing your heart rate when it comes to interval training and heart rate training, training within the zones and everything like that. A heart rate monitor strap is much more accurate. Plus, if you have tattoos, which I have two tattoos on both wrists, right in the spot where a watch goes that can influence the readings so yeah you kind of just wear this around your chest it connects with your watch and it just gives you a much more accurate reading I definitely don't wear this on every single run I do really like it I do find it useful in terms of fueling on your runs obviously outside of that you want to be making sure you have pre-run snack or a pre-run meal whatever it may be depending on what you're doing but in terms of long runs you want to be making sure you take fuel with you I did so much research when it came to picking a gel. Granted, this is the only gel I've ever used, but I do really like it. I got this recommendation from Nick Bear, who is a very intense man, and he is very impressive. And he recommended these. These are the Spring Energy Gels. They look like this. As someone who struggles with their gut health, the last thing that I want to be doing is having a gel full of just artificial stuff that'll probably make me shit my pants on the run, which that is a whole other topic in itself. These are in the flavor Awesome Sauce. They are 180 calories and the ingredients are organic basmati rice, organic apple sauce, apple juice, yams, maple syrup, lemon juice, vanilla, sea salt, and cinnamon. That's it. Really good ingredients. I believe, how many carbs? They have 45 grams of carbs. They truly do just taste like applesauce, which is nice because when you do start doing really really long runs You're going to be needing to take a few of these I feel like you get over the taste of it pretty quickly. So I love these I bought two packs of 20 <laughs> For my half marathon. So I still have heaps left over go down. Well, don't upset my stomach They have other flavors and styles they have ones with caffeine in them. That kind of scares me though to take a gel with caffeine because I feel like that's just asking for a poo. I also highly recommend taking electrolytes when you go on long runs because when you run, you lose a lot of sweat, especially especially in Queensland and especially as it's getting warmer you want to make sure you are efficiently replenishing your electrolytes because that is what's going to make you cramp up it's going to make you extremely dehydrated if you are just drinking water and you're not actually replenishing your electrolytes the ones that I really like using I don't have any at the moment but I need to get some more they're by the brand LMT they again really good ingredients I believe they have a thousand milligrams of sodium per sachet which sounds like a lot when it comes to doing these long runs that is really really important it also has I want to say shot in the dark 200 milligrams of potassium something like that but they taste incredible even my boyfriend really really loves them I've tried some other electrolyte drinks and they just don't taste very good you can make your own homemade version which I have tried doing that in the past and I just did not like it because obviously it's a very it's a very salty sweet drink and it can be a bit jarring if you're not used to it but the LMT ones are so 
delicious. I really want to try the other flavors. I think the one we had was watermelon or something like that. So good. I feel like they really, really help you in terms of cramping and just not dying on a run. It makes a big difference. It's probably even more important than a gel. It's very important. Don't neglect electrolytes. Okay, and then a new addition are these sunglasses. If you had told me that I would be that person that wears running sunglasses like this, I would have laughed in your face, but here we are. I got a pair of running sunnies off Amazon. I think they were $20 or maybe they were 30. I was just testing the water, but they did not look cute because they kind of sat like here on me. Like they sat real weird and I did not look cute. So these I tried on at Rebel Sport just as a joke. And I was like, oh, I kind of like those. I really like the rainbow reflection they have going on here. I believe these are cycling sunglasses, but I'm assuming it kind of works the same. They were $50. So if you go into Rebel Sport, they're kind of on the, the sunglass tower because the Oakleys are all locked up and they're like way more expensive. I do find these really practical because they block out the sun and they block out the wind. My eyes get so watery and I feel really tired throughout the day if it's been quite windy and I haven't worn any sunglasses. So I really like these and I just really didn't want to wear my normal sunglasses on runs anymore. And now I really want to get an all black pair, you know, to match the outfits. <laughs> Another recommendation, especially if you're running in a hotter climate is Vaseline. This is a new use and I've heard people talk about this before, but recently I've been getting kind of breakouts on my armpits. I do think part of it was from the deodorant that I was using, but I don't like to wear anything long sleeve anymore when I run because it's way too hot for that. So I've been putting Vaseline underneath my armpits, like around this area, and it helps a lot because I believe it's water resistant, right? But it works really well. You can buy Body Glide, which is an anti-chafe, but I mean, Vaseline's like four dollars. So those are all my recommendations for your kit. I have just started a 10K training block with Runner. Runner is the app that I use for my training plans. You guys ask me that all the time. I use them for my half marathon and they are brilliant. Coming from someone who is not naturally good at running, they have helped me improve so much. You can tailor it to your abilities. You enter in all your information. They even have a strength and conditioning addition. You can set it up. So I've just started doing that because um, making sure you're doing gym workouts and working on your strength, mobility, all that jazz makes a big difference when it comes to running because you need your muscles to be strong when you run. You need your muscles to be able to carry you. So a lot of single leg exercises, working on your core strength, a lot of lunges, a lot of single leg hip thrusts, calf raises, that type of thing. I've only done one workout so far, but I really enjoyed it because it was so different to what I normally do. I can't rave about runner enough. I do have a code with them, which will get you two weeks free. That's just Connor. I can't wait to start training for a marathon and just fully dive into everything that comes along with that. But for now, we're doing 10k. <laughs> Another thing I will say that really, really helps with running is having a good playlist. I do love a good podcast on a run. I will say I think I'm more of a music girly, but if you're doing a long run or an easy run, having a podcast is really good. Having a podcast on an easy run is nice because you don't want to be going fast. So sometimes if you're listening to really intense music you're like wait 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 no no I have to slow down this is supposed to be easy so having a podcast is actually really good for that I'll leave my Spotify down below but I have a few different playlists I have one called run baby run get it girly and my songs to play at a party playlist I actually need to update the running one because I, I haven't added anything in a while but yeah having a good running playlist honestly sometimes can make or break you it's very very influential I think one of the things that can actually help you in terms of motivation the most is entering a race I I think that just gives you such a solid goal to train for because basically it's on this day at this time I'm gonna run this distance I'm entering a race I'm gonna get a number it's an official thing and it just gives you something to strive for I loved training for my half marathon because it gave me so much purpose and drive and motivation and I loved it that's why I'm so excited to have another really strong goal which I do it's just a little bit I can't really do anything about it at this point in time but yeah entering a race can be super Super beneficial in terms of motivation and it's exciting you can you know get your family to come with you, you get cool race photos you just make a big thing of it it's yeah it's really great. And I think my final tip if you are a beginner is don't overdo it. I think it's really easy especially if you kind of get the running bug 
bud, especially if you get the running bug. It's really easy to overdo it. I definitely think I l overdid it a little bit when I was training for the half marathon because I was running four days a week and I'm only running three days a week and I think I won't run more than three days a week going forward just because it's a lot. Four days is a lot and I think three, three is just perfect for me, but don't overdo it. It definitely takes time building up your strength and your endurance and you can really burn yourself out if you try and do too much too soon. So just enjoy it because running is so much fun. It is the best thing ever and you don't want it to become a chore. You know? All right, that is everything that I can think of for this video. I probably should have asked you guys to ask me questions. Maybe I'll do a part two or something. I'll try and also leave down below other running advice related videos because I've done a couple. I've got a how to start running video. I've got another part two how to start running video. Um, I've got heaps of heaps of running stuff. So thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are in the world and I will see you in the next one. Bye.